Jake Lamb, the physics man. Jake Lamb, the physics man. Jake, 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 Jake Lamb, the physics man. Chemistry is the study of matter and energy and how it changes. Today's episode will be about chemistry. Today we will talk about Half Life with. What's your Mauricio. name? Half Life with Horatio. Uh, no, it's Mauricio. This is Horatio from Ontario. Half Life can, de can be defined as the time required for one half of the nuclei of a radioisotope sample to decay to products. So if the half-life of these grapes is five seconds, then the half-life, then the half-life of these grapes, then half of the grapes will be gone after five seconds. The equation for half-life is the natural log of nt over no equals negative 0.693 over half-life times th. So for the variables, th is the age of the sample, hl is the half-life, nt is the amount of parent material not yet decayed, and no is the total amount of material. So first let's find the variables. Finding half-life, TH is 321 days, NT over NO. Um, the problem is 20% <laughs> of polonium-210 remains in the sample after 321 days. What is the half-life? So we're finding the half-life, TH is 321 days, and NT over NO is 0.2. So then step two, we would plug it into the equation. L, the natural log of 2 equals negative 0.693 over half-life times 321. And then the next step is simplify, and so half-life turns out to be 138.2175. And you can only have that's that's not a full day, so it just rounded to 100, 138 days to half-life of 20. Well, that wraps it up on Half-Life with Horatio from Ontario. We'll see you next time on... Jake Lamb, the Physics Man. Chemical Reaction. is a process that involves measurement of the molecular or ionic structure of a substance as opposed to a change in physical form or a nuclear reaction. The six types of chemical reactions are combustion, synthesis, decomposition, single displacement, double displacement, acid base. In this reaction, we use hydrogen peroxide, dish soap, and potassium iodine. This was an example of decomposition reaction.
Synthesis reaction is also called combustion reaction and this is a reaction in which two or more substances form a single substance. Decomposition reaction is the opposite of synthesis. This is a reaction in which one object breaks apart in two or more parts. Single replacement reaction. This is a reaction in which one element takes the place of another. Double replacement reaction is when one in which two different compounds exchange positive ions. Decomposition reaction is the opposite of synthesis. This is a reaction in which one object breaks apart in two or more parts. Single replacement reaction. This is a reaction in which one element takes the place of another. Double replacement reaction is when one in which two different compounds exchange positive ions and make new compounds. Combustion reaction is one in which a substance rapidly reacts with oxygen and it must be on the reaction side. An acid-base reaction is a chemical reaction that occurs between an acid and a base. Welcome to our section of Jake Lamb, the physics man. Today we're going to be talking about pH. pH is a negative log of the activity of a hydrogen ion in an aqueous solution. If a substance has a pH less than 7, it is acidic. But if it has a solution with a pH greater than 7, it is basic or alkaline. So we'll be using this scale to determine what each substance is. If it's dark red, it means it's 1 and it's an acid. If it's more of a greenish color, it's 7 and it's neutral. If it's a dark purple, it's 14 and it's a base. We're going to show you how to find the pH, but first, make sure you get your safety glasses on. So we boil the cabbage to get cabbage water, which we are going to pour in 20 milliliters into this graduated cylinder. On graduation day. And then pour it into the test tube. Then we'll take our first substance, milk and pour 10 milliliters of it into this cylinder and put that into the same test tube which should change the color into a lighter purple so we can use the scale to determine that it is a base. Again we took 20 milliliters of the boiled cabbage water we're pouring it into the second test tube. And we'll take 10 milliliters of milk of magnesia, which I do not suggest drinking. Ew. And put it into the same test tube. Don't suggest trying this at home or you might throw up. Mix it up. And you get a turquoise ish color. And you can tell that it is. Neutral-ish. And you get a turquoise-ish color. And you can tell that it is neutral-ish. Then again, we'll take 20 milliliters. And pour it into the third test tube. And we'll use 10 milliliters of Dye Mountain Dew to determine just how bad this stuff really is for you. Because it turns it into a very bright pink color. Which, if you look at our scale, says it's probably more of an acid. 
and I'll be drinking that. So 20 milliliters again. And then 10 milliliters of freshly squeezed orange juice. Thank you, Mom. And not very surprising, it's also in there. milliliters back into the test tube. And because I always want to cut one of those things open, just 10 milliliters of a Tide Pod. And that turns into a purple. I don't even know. It looks really cool though. Meaning it's a base. Now you can use pH to determine a lot of things. Like the pH balance in your swimming pool to determine how safe it is to go swimming. You swim. Or the pH balance of your fer soil to realize how fertile it is. You dig. neutrons and electrons. Atoms. Everything is made of atoms, but what are atoms made of? Atoms are made of three subatomic particles. Protons, neutrons, and electrons. Protons and neutrons are located in the center of the atom called the nucleus. Electrons are orbiting on the outside of the nucleus, approximately 500 meters away. So let's break these particles down a little bit farther. Protons have a positive charge and a mass of 1 AMU. Neutrons have a neutral charge, or no charge at all, and have a mass of 1 AMU. Electrons have a negative charge, and a mass of zero AMU. Atoms. Now we're going to give you an idea of the size of a proton compared to an electron. This is a balloon and it's going to be a proton or neutron and it's this big. If the proton or neutron was this big, the electron would be the size of the tip of this pen. But the two particles would not be this close together. They'd be at least 500 meters away. So if I'm holding the balloon here, Grace would have to run the length of five football fields to get to the actual electron. Okay, the periodic table. The periodic table is a table composed of all the elements known to scientists. The elements are all labeled like this. The name of the element, the atomic number, or the number of protons in the nucleus, the, the element symbol, which is a, composed of a few letters of the element's name, and then the atomic mass, which is the weight of one of the atoms of the element. That ending was so funny. I slapped my knee on that one. <laughs> So in conclusion, I hope you learn these basic things about atoms. There are three subatomic particles that make up atoms. Protons and neutrons in the nucleus, and electrons orbiting around them. Atoms are mostly empty space. Protons and neutrons are a whole lot bigger than little electrons. And electrons are so far away from the nucleus that it's hard to even imagine that our world could be made of these things. Atoms are also directly linked to the periodic table, corresponding with 
the subatomic number, and the mass. Go Adams! Welcome to chemistry, sixth period, John. Welcome to sixth period, chemistry, Laura Minks. Welcome to sixth period, chemistry, Right. Today we are going to learn about chain reactions. First off, the definition of a chain reaction is a reaction that results in a product necessary for the continuance of a reaction. Chain reactions can be demonstrated by a tree diagram. The first branch has two offsprings and then the offsprings will have four. Each group continues the pattern and it can go on forever and ever. Chain reactions are self-sustaining. Once started, it continues without further outside influence. The condition factors include temperature, quality, quantity, and the shape of a substance. Examples of chain reactions include dominoes falling and wood burning. Dominoes falling is an example of mechanical chain reactions, as word burning is an example of chemical chain reactions. This demonstrates the mechanical chain reaction. When I throw this can, it will represent the domino effect. When one can falls over, it hopefully knocks down the rest. A pile of wood burning after it has been kindled is an example of a chemical chain reaction. In the latter case, each piece of wood as it burns must release enough heat to raise nearby pieces to the kindling point. The wood therefore must be piled close enough together so that not too much heat is lost to the surrounding air. We're about ready to light it up. diagrams show how bonding works represents the number of electrons in an atom. First rule is number of protons equal number of electrons. Second rule, atoms want to have a full outer shell. First shell only has two electrons max. Second shell has eight electrons. Third shell has 18 electrons. Fourth shell has 32 electrons. Fifth shell has 50 electrons. Number of shells equal periodic table row number 
always less than 10. Full outer shell equals happy atom. P equals number of protons. N equals number of electrons. Number of electrons equal atomic number. The first shell only has two, as it shows, and the second shell has eight, and the third shell has 18, and these are the valence electrons. of Jake Lamb, the physics man, we will be discussing percent composition. The percent composition of a component in a compound is the percent of the total mass of the compound that is due to that component. To find the percent composition of an element, you will divide the mass of an element by the mass of the compound and multiply it by 100. To give you guys a gist of what percent composition is, we will be giving you some examples. Like... For the first example, We will be finding the percent composition of sulfur. First, you will need to find the molar mass, and to figure that out, you'll take the mass of hydrogen, which is 1, multiply that by 2, then you get the mass of sulfur, which will be 16, and you multiply that by 1 to get 16. Lastly, you'll get the mass of oxygen, which is 8, and multiply it by 4 to get 32. Then you'll find, no, then you'll add them all up to get 50. And to find the percent composition of sulfur, you'll need to take 16 divided by 50 and multiply what you get by 100 to get 32. And for the second example, We will be finding the percent composition of potassium. Again, you'll need to find the molar mass, and to find that, you'll multiply its mass, 39, by 2, which will give you 78 grams. Next, you'll find the mass of chromium, 32, but won't have to multiply it by anything. Lastly, you'll get the mass of oxygen and multiply it by 4 to get 32. Finally, you'll add them all up and get 194 grams. So to find the percentage composition, you'll divide potassium's mass by 194 to get 40.2%. Um, Just like... you find percentage composition. Jake Lamb, the physics man. Jake Lamb, the physics man. Jake, 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 Jake Lamb, the physics man. Chemistry is the study of matter and energy and how it changes.
dig. 